welcome back so yesterday uh, uh, we had uh, a discussion on the active uh, fault and in particular the strike slip uh, faulting where i explain that uh, how the movement will be uh, seen on the surface and what are the manifestation that we should look for identifying the strike slip faults okay now uh, this is again an, a sketch which shows uh, that two blocks have passed each other along uh, a line here this is what we call the fault line on the surface and if you see the section uh, which is sometime difficult but you can try and feel but since we are talking about the photo interpretations or the photo geology part we will be looking mostly on the surface so based on the surface manifestation how we will identify it we'll see couple of slides but here i can uh, tell you about that whatever deformation is taking subsurface will be reflected on the surface okay and the landforms or the features which exist on the surface will get modified and what is a simple way which has been shown here in this sketch that the streams which are flowing and crossing the fault will also get deflected because of the movement taking place between these two blocks and this is what we look at this stream is coming like this and then following the fault and then keep start flowing like that okay so if you look at the the drainage which was initially flowing like that okay so these are the streams which were flowing without having any influence of the fault but when the fault came up and then displacement took place for example this is the movement has taken place like that then what you will see is the streams which were coming like this will get deflected so the present configuration of the stream will be this one along the fault okay. so this is one very uh, commonly seen or observed feature which you will try to identify when you are doing photo interpretation okay to mark the active fault which is having strike slip motion along with that we have few more features which we will talk later but this is the most common which you will see now suppose the movement is in the opposite direction okay so if you have the movement which is taking place like that okay then what will happen it will be exactly opposite so the streams which were flowing straight here like this but because of this movement along the on the fault it will change again in a similar way but now it will be something like this so this based on the movement or the pattern of displacement we can say either it is a right lateral strike slip fault or left lateral strike slip fault is one of the best example which you will find in most of the textbooks and in literature is of san andreas fault system so what you see in this aerial oblique aerial photograph and you have the fault trace along with that you have a very prominent scarps the fault scarps which have developed and along with that you have an offset of streams here so fault runs here and then offset of stream has been seen 
like that. Okay. So this is untypical of a strike slip fault, and this motion here, if you look at, is something like that. Okay. Hence, we can say this is a right lateral strike slip fault. So just giving a brief idea about the right lateral strike slip fault and left lateral strike slip fault which is also termed as dextral that is for right lateral and left lateral strike slip fault we say sinistral moment. Okay. So here it has been again shown the similar pattern that if you are having the right block moving towards your side irrespective of where you are standing okay, if you are looking from this place then also it will be right lateral if you are looking from this place then also it will be right lateral ok. So whichever block is moving towards us based on that we will say it is a right lateral or a left lateral. So here all this faults A, B, C which have been shown are all right lateral strike slip faults. Another example just uh, which has been given to understand this where the two rail tracks have been displaced which are showing sinistral left lateral moment and dextral right lateral moment. Okay. So where this block is moving towards our side whereas if you stand here and see the left block is moving towards your side. So that you can identify easily based on that. This was an example of a man made structure which was displaced during uh, San Francisco earthquake and another one has been shown where I was talking about that along with the uh, offset of streams or deflection of the streams which have been shown here okay, what another features you will see is the formation of the sac ponds okay. and you will also see a very linear valley which has been formed along such faults. This is again, again a similar example. So we are having formation of the sac ponds and the displacement which has created a very linear feature on the earth's surface. Now, as we would we, we see that okay, find the landforms or the features which will be uh, which will exist on the surface where the drainage is there, we will also have some hilly regions okay, or the hills or the ridges they will also get offset okay. So you will also see the offset of hill ranges as well as the streams on, on the surface. Now this is a very good example again from Japan where uh, 1995 Kobe earthquake took place okay. So this is a main island that is what they call Honshu and Kobe was the city which was destroyed or we can say that it experienced extensive damage and the fault which runs it runs through the Awaji. Okay. So this is the fault main main fault strength what is what they call is median tectonic line MTL and the earthquake of 1995 Kobe occurred over this place this was the epicenter and then fault which run through or ruptured the surface was through the Awaji island okay. and I will show a couple of photographs field photographs which they have they took after the event how it looks like okay and also the uh, the aerial photographs which they took after the event okay. So this fault which ruptured in 1995 is the Nojima fault and this was one of the damaging event of, of in, in Japan. Okay. So since the earthquake epicenter was between the two islands here which was which is connected by the bridge here okay, the suspension bridge this also experienced some shift okay, because of the displacement and again the displacement was along the strike of the fault and that is what we call the strike slip fault. 
So, what type of movement it was, whether it was right lateral or left lateral, we will see in the coming slides. Okay. So, the Kobe earthquake, the magnitude was around 7.2, stuck on 7 Jan 1995, caused severe damage. Okay. The rupture propagated laterally in both direction, as I was showing in the previous slide from the epicenter it moved towards north as well as towards south and it cut through the Awaji island and the fault name was Nojima fault and it the rupture extended almost for 10 kilometers. Now, what they observed was the surface faulting resulted into maximum right lateral displacement of 128, 1.9 1, 1 meters. Okay. So, this was the, uh, the displacement laterally as well as it also accompanied a vertical displacement and that what I was uh, talking in my previous lecture that you will may come across in combination of both okay. that is right lateral displacement that is the fault has moved lat laterally as well as oblique. Okay. So, I will show here if you look at that what exactly happened was that you had this movement, but along with this you had a movement where the one of the block moved up okay, something like this okay. So, you have a lateral movement and at the same time you are having the uh, the oblique slip okay. Uh, so, vertical displacement which was observed was 1.2 meters. So, I will not go into this detail, but you can look at okay, that many people were been killed. Now, after this at least if you if you we consider that what they have done in terms of saving the people or providing safer environment to the society, they have extensively uh, mapped all such faults that exist in Japan and that similar thing we need to do in India also, because we are as we were talking about that the infrastructure development is exponentially growing. Okay. So, surface rupture this is what they observed after the, uh, the Kobe earthquake and you can see this is an aerial photograph which has been taken. So, rupture was seen here where you can see that some portion of the, the land has been uplifted here as well as right lateral movement. Okay. Now, ground photograph of that. Okay. So, you are having one block which has moved up. Okay. So, this is what we call thrust fault okay. and we have also strike slip movement. So, both were combined in this okay. close up of that. So, this photograph is from this location. The same photograph has been seen the ground photograph and the aerial view. So, what has been seen here is that these are two piercing points okay. this one and this one. So, this two were together before the displacement took place. Okay. So, the movement occurred was something like 1.9 meter it moved laterally and 1.2 meter it moved vertically. Okay. Now, let us have a few questions here that why this identification of such faults are important. Suppose, you construct some structure on the top of this okay, when there was no fault trace identified. And if earthquake comes and which is very much likely because these are all active faults. So, in future if the structure is sitting on the top of this fault line it will experience severe damage. So, we need to avoid such locations from constructing uh, the civil structures. Okay. So, this is another aerial view of uh, the fall trace of 1995 Kobe 
earthquake which moved laterally so we had like right lateral movement as well as we had thrust movement along with this okay. so this is a very beautiful trace which they finally preserved and converted this whole area into a museum so what was the idea behind this that why they wanted to preserve it they wanted to show the local people or the citizen of japan that such things will happen in future and we should be aware of this okay so you you get support from the local people also as well as from the government to provide the safer environment now if you see here this house was just like very narrowly escaped the damage okay i'll show the close up of this okay so the trace goes like this here and it between these two arrows okay so another aerial view of this so trace is over here you can clearly see that the road got deformed and the agricultural fields also and it crossed just so it, this house was having like was ha had an very narrow escape from this however the displacement it resulted into the lateral shift of the compound walls okay you can see here this one you can see a very clear offset over here also okay so this also they have preserved okay so close up of that again an aerial view you can see that the land has moved up hence you see the breaking here this part has gone down okay because this was straight before the displacement took place okay as well as it moved laterally another view you can easily trace out this so like stream offset or the man made structures which are sitting on the top of the fault will also experience a damage suppose this fault was few meters over here then you can imagine that what would have happened another view of that house now coming to the indian uh, scenario okay this is an uh, shaded relief map of northwest himalaya and just to uh, make you comfortable that where exactly this lies this is the uh, the one of the well built city of chandigarh this area is close to that so this side which you see is your indo-gangetic plain and the boundary between the rugged terrain is your the plate boundary the pleasant plate boundary between the indian plate and this is your eurasian plate so this marks the himalayan frontal thrust and we have several chains of mountains or you can say the folded ranges one is here another one is here third one is here and so on okay. all this folded ranges are bounded to their south as well as in some places to their north also by active faults so let us see what uh, we we were able to identify in terms of the strike slip fault because we are discussing strike slip fault and later we will talk about the thrust faults also from the indian examples okay so this area we took and we have been doing studies in this area since last 10 years and we have picked up and marked several new faults which were not mapped earlier and which is extremely important for the hazard assessment in this region so what we do is again there is a part of the remote sensing or uh, photo geology and uh, photo interpretation you can use different uh, data which is available either into in a uh, free domain or you can purchase from 
National Remote Sensing Agency, Hyderabad. Now we are doing and buying the uh, the data from uh, NRHC Hyderabad, which provides us a very high resolution satellite data, cartosat data mainly. So this uh, is just to see, see the elevation variations and all that. This was been prepared using satellite uh, radar topographic mission data SRTM. So this is again a shaded relief map, which clearly shows the uh, the variation in the topography in this region. Okay, and these are all black lines, which have been marked, are the traces of active faults, which we have. So this active fault traces have been marked based on the the features which we picked up on the satellite data. Okay. And what is required is that this information has been extracted in a form of what we call the geomorphic map. Okay. What we do is in geomorphic map, this exercise you will be doing, we also mark the different surfaces. Because as time goes, you will have deposition in the area because you are eroding the sediments you are depositing. Okay. So the rivers or the streams which are flowing across these regions will also deposit as well as erode. Okay. So erosion and deposition and that will result into the development or the formation of different landforms what we call river terraces or you will have alluvial fans and all that. Okay. So these are all surfaces, fluvial surfaces which have been marked with this different symbols which have been given here and we have classified this as an younger terrace T1, T0, T1, T2, T3 and T4. Okay. So T4 is the oldest. Okay. So if you take the cross section here then what you will see is something like step like features. Okay. So if you put this on T0, this is T1, T2, T3 and then T4. So this terraces were developed in last more than 10,000 years. Okay. And what we found was this all terraces at some locations were displaced. If you see here, this all terraces are displaced. So they are vertically displaced and if you take a cross section here across one of the, uh, the terrace then the topography you will come across will be something like this. Okay. So this is what the step along the strike and across the uh, uh, you will see this is a, along the strike whereas across if you move then you will have this configuration of the terraces. Okay. And this is what we call the false scarp and fault line will be somewhere here. So this information is extremely important because this will go as a map which will be important for the uh, the users okay and who are the users for this are the town planners okay mainly the civil engineers okay structural engineers. So they will take care of this that while selecting the site we will avoid putting any structure on top of it. Okay. So we will keep a sort of a buffer zone uh, avoiding this fault lines. Okay. Now the point is that when it was not known before, so what we did? So without having any awareness about that where the fault line is passing through, what we did? We avoided putting structures on the top of it. We will see a couple of examples of that. Okay. Now another point here which I would like to emphasize that based on the topography for which will develop by different faults or the displacement coming right up to the surface, we have marked this falls. For example, this is marked here 
as in thrust fault. This one is again a thrust fault. These are all thrust faults. Okay. So the deformation is something like that. Okay, here. But this point here, this line, is showing a right lateral. So there is a variation in deformation in a very short distance. Okay. So hardly, if you take this in four kilometer, so maybe this is covering hardly 20-25 kilometers or 30 kilometers across this. Okay. So in a stretch of 30 kilometers, we have faults one, two. 3 and 4, 4 faults and this all 4 faults as per our research suggest that they will move in future. Now let us see what we see on the surface and how we identify it. This is in high resolution again the corona satellite photograph. When you will do the lab we will provide all the details of this which was been which is again available on you can buy through internet. Okay, because this and declassified images or the photographs taken by US spy satellite and it was declassified in 1995 or so and we use this the reasons were because in from 65 or so because this data is start they started collecting this information for military purposes and all that in 64 or 65 where when the, the development or the construction was not so high in India okay. and the definitely if you go back uh, about 40-50 years you will see that the erosion is also not much at that time. Okay. So we see a very fresh landforms which were not modified by the erosion as well as not modified by the human intervention. Okay. So the fault passes through this part here and this was identified which was a new fault and we named this as an Taxal fault. So Taxal fault is there is a, uh, a town named as Taxal near somewhere here and so based on that we ident we name this as an taxal fault. Okay. So if you look at the, the fault trace there is a location's name few uh, Banit and uh, Chuag okay, where we uh, we found that the, the fault extend for about 20 kilometers which is quite bit good enough for uh, the deformation or, or triggering the, the large magnitude earthquake in this region which shows light right lateral offset of streams as well as quaternary fluvial terraces. False scar plates ranges in height up to 12 to 30 meters facing west northwest and east southeast okay. which indicates that this the displacement which was experienced was right lateral as well as a, a dip slip movement also. Okay. And the maximum vertical displacement at one location which was identified was about 50 meters. Okay. A lateral offset of the streams which were identified was between 250 to 1350 meters. Okay. So this also indicates that the variation which we are able to see here is because of this stream is showing a sort of an cumulative displacement and this stream is showing very young displacement. Okay. So let us see how, with, how many streams we were able to pick up here. The blue lines are showing all streams which are coming up on your screen. Okay. So this were the offsets we picked up and also at one location we were able to pick up the, the sac point here. So movement is right lateral, so close up of this and this part if at all I am having, let us see, yeah, okay. So the offset 
which runs here is the stream flowing through this area and then getting offsetted and start flowing like that okay the fault runs over here and the offset which was measured was almost around 500 meters okay so i'll stop here and we will continue in the next lecture thank you so much